crossing the water without crossing the fingers and getting the feet wet was a big problem in the days when streams were forded by means of stepping stones. If you knew the ropes, this was another way. Compare that feat with bridging the Atlantic, for that's what the Clacken Bridge actually does. On the west coast of Scotland, it connects the Isle of Seal with the mainland, and the Atlantic flows between them. Coming nearer home, the Tower Bridge has been described as the noblest in the world. The beautiful Connell Ferry Bridge across Loch Etive was built in 1902. It's a fine example of the cantilever principle and saves a detour of nearly 60 miles. The Great Forth Bridge is another cantilever masterpiece. It's about a mile long and took seven years to build. A positive marvel of engineering skill is the Sydney Harbour Bridge. For 12 years the work went on and the cost was 10 million pounds. See how it was built. Huge steel anchor ropes hold the first girders back. Before the spans meet, the terrific weight is taken by the anchor ropes and is divided between two pivot bearings. The pylons are built up and the bridge sections, or creeper planes as they're called, are gradually extended until both sides join. Then the anchor ropes are scrapped and the bridge is finished. Now compare Sydney Bridge with St Paul's Cathedral. Perhaps the most spectacular of all bridges is San Francisco's across the Golden Horn. Suspension cables were never more skillfully distributed, with the main tires 750 feet high and the length three quarters of a mile. The San Francisco Bridge, which was finished in 1936, cost seven million pounds. Beside being equipped with spacious footways, it takes six lines of motor traffic 220 feet above the sea. See how they grow. bridges have other uses. It may be that Cupid took a hand in building some of them. <laughs>